Hello, I'm Archibald Chesterfield III. I'm the method actor who plays Paul Pluto. And today I want to talk about my love affair. My love affair with the Omega Speedmaster, Man on the Fucking Moon. Man on the Fucking Moon. And I gotta tell you, before I start, remember, like, subscribe, and tell your circle jerking friends about my channel. So, fuckers, today I want to talk about the Rolex... No! The Omega! The Omega Speedmaster. Man on a fucking moon! <laughs> and i got to tell you the truth there. I came to chronographs way, way into my collecting phase there. I kind of hated chronographs. I never... I'm a bit of a fucking conservative fucker. And, uh... The Daytona in Rolex was always so, you know, so dear, you just, ugh, you couldn't get one of those. When did I come to, um, to Omega? Well, it's, it's actually, it actually happened when I, um, I came, I started buying and selling a few watches again. And I, I had a huge disaster in the late 90s where I lost a lot of money. Then I left it, I came back in and out. Then then I, I came back into them in, this would be late noughties, okay. So very late into my collecting arena. I'd never owned a Speedmaster. I hadn't had too many Amigas. And uh, yes, I had a Seamaster when I was 15. Uh, Wallace Bishop had a deal on quartz Seamasters. They were $150, I remember. I sold my Seiko to my old man so I could get this this uh, Wallace Bishop Omega Seamaster quartz. I love that watch. <laughs> Anyhow, that's another story. But um, so Omega itself, there I I came in late to it, and um, I remember I I had a little bit of money, and, and sort of the Rolex sports watches had kind of they were going crazy, and I thought you know. What did I have at the time? I'm just trying to remember what I had. I had a... I had a two-tone date just with factory diamond dials, a 16233. Had a greyish, silvery dial, silvery dial. And then I thought, you know something, I'll get a, I'll get a, uh, a Speedmaster. And then I got a Breitling Navi timer. And I really loved it. I really loved it. It was such. It was the first chronograph Omega I'd had, and oh, I'd had one years before that. That's right. I had an Auto Speedmaster, which I sort of just bought to flick. I actually lost money on it. Fuck, that was a disaster. That one. And anyhow, anyhow, um, what happened was I got one, and and I kind of realised. Fuck, these chronographs are fantastic. And I sold it. I sold... The only reason I sold that was because I had a small inheritance that came my way and I had a chance to get a Patek Calatrava at 5107. So in order to pay for that, I had to sell off uh, some of my pieces. Actually, I sold my, my two-tone Datejust, my Speedy... And the Breitling. Actually, I sold the Amiga first. I sold that first to a guy who worked for Microsoft. And I got to tell you, after I sold it, I got the Patek for a while. <clears throat> and I, I, I Rolexed up. After I had money come in again, I then Rolexed up. I had a, I had a steel date, just 16234. I had an Explorer 1. That was a 14270. And then, then, you know, after a while, I thought, geez, you know, I'd really like to get a Speedmaster again. And I, I had a few. I had a few. I, I bought one from, from Ronnie from uh, Brisbane Vintage Watches. Now, now it's called Vintage Watch Co. Really mint one. I must admit, that was a fucking beautiful one. That was probably one of my favorite ones beside, before I got this one here. And... I, I got to tell you, it was just such a cool watch. It was just a, it was just a cool watch, 
that I, I really fucking loved. I, I mean, it was just... You know, what, what I love about it is that these are relatively... This is a... This is a what's it? It's a 2007 Speedy, I think. But it feels like a vintage watch. It's Helsa light glass. No pussy display bag. Manual wine. You wind the bastard up. It feels like a... Um, it feels like a vintage watch, but it's modern. So, you know, it, it's, it's, they're a really cool thing to have. And, um, I, I, I remember, I remember, I, I, uh, it's a bit strange, you know, life is a bit of a learning curve. I then, I then went through this fucking stupid phase where I, um, <coughs> I became addicted to really high end. Remember the Archie 5? And I remember I had I had the annual calendar, I had the 5107, I had a Reverso Grand Date, I had a Breguet Type 20, and an AP. And when I was building that collection, I'd actually sold off my Speedmaster again because I thought the Omega wasn't good enough, wasn't worthy of my collection. And then when I started, you know, the Archie 5, funny thing is, the first watch I bought when I was expanding the Archie 5 was a Speedmaster. <clears throat> then I sold off the annual calendar. <laughs> then I sold, you know, it's kind of it's kind of strange. And uh, I got to tell you what, one thing I, I found really interesting is that I, at one stage, I had two Speedmasters. And um, I sold one to fucking Suckerhorn. He, he, the fucker, the fucking asshole, fucking. I sold it to him cheap. The bastard had a fight with me, and he went and fucking sold it, made five hundred bucks. And I, I tell you what, I'm, I'm not going to fucking give Suckerhorn a deal like that again. When I gave it to him at cost, it was a real deal. And w when he had an argument with me, he fucking. Fucking sold the bastard off. I thought that was a bit shitty, but anyhow, yeah, people, people, people do annoying things all the time. And, and then, I mean, Sackerhorn's okay, but I'm not gonna fucking sell him another one at that price. That's for sure. Uh, but I, I, I gotta tell you, it's um, I sold a lot off, and and now I've kind of gone into the full maturity, and I, it's funny because. I then wanted a really minty Speedmaster and I couldn't find one so I ended up buying a 1990s one which was really nice Nick I um, I got it polished and I sold it to Greg Kinder I think Greg still got it that's actually a really good one it's got the 861 as opposed to the 1861 that the newer one has got but I wanted a box paper, minty, 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 newish one. Now that's kind of my genre. These were fucking hard to find, and uh, <coughs> I, I gotta tell you, they're, they're a bit tricky. Speedmasters, I don't understand it because sometimes I, I looked around, looked and looked and looked and looked, and, and this Speedmaster here, I actually paid three seven Aussie for it, three thousand seven hundred Aussie. And uh, that's with GST. And uh, 3,700. Um, so that, that, was, that was quite expensive. I was able to get the tax back because I, I went overseas for a while. So it got 10% back. So 3,3. Three. But, you know, that, that was they're quite expensive, these fucking things. And I, I got to tell you, in all honesty, I <coughs> the Speedmaster Man on the Fucking Moon. If I only had one watch, only had one watch, okay, the Patek or the Gold Sub, they're they're too expensive. Of course, they would have to go. That'd be one of the first things. If you were in really big money problems, that's that's what would go. The Reverso. That'd probably go too because it's so easy to sell and it's quite expensive. <coughs> but 
I, I think these are such a cool watch. They are so damn cool. I mean, they're, they're an icon and a classic. They are the moon watch. So anyone who's an American, 1969, Neil Armstrong, that's the sort of piece you'd love. And I, I, I think they're really classic. I really do think that they're, they're just a, a, a cool thing. They're very, um, I mean, you think about it. This watch came out in the late 50s, 57. The 60th anniversary has just come up now. And they haven't changed that much. It's still, you know, they, they, they've, they've had some slight alterations. But this, this has essentially been the same for 30 years. Once they went to the 861 movement, I mean, this isn't that much different. And I, I think they're a great chronograph. They're they're wonderful. I mean, they're not waterproof. And no chronograph is re was besides a Seamaster chronograph. But I've never in too many holes, too many places, water could possibly get in there. But they got a dust cover in them. That they're, they're a really well made piece. They've got a really high end movement. Um. They've got, I like the bracelet. The bracelet is fucking nice. It's solid end link bracelet. They're not a rattlesnake. I mean, Rolex still had rattly fucking bracelets when, the, when these had solid bracelets. Um, I mean, it's the moon watch. I mean, it's a famous Omega. And, I mean, Omega tried to flush it out. They tried to release the Speedmaster Mark II. Which I do love. I've, I've, I've owned a few of that. I've owned a couple of that. Two of those. Two of those I've had. But they never took over. The, it was the original Moon Watch which sort of stayed in flavour. So, in many ways, if, if I only could only have. I mean, if I wasn't Archie Luxury, the famous international watch guru, if I was just a normal schmuck, I think you could have a, a Speedmaster. Man on the fucking moon. That'd be that'd be a cool watch to have, don't you think? You could get through life with the Speedmaster. That's a, it's a great watch, and I love it because it's got the manual wind. I mean, normally with a chronograph movement, that's automatic. They're fucking noisy. You hear those Velju seven seven five O's. They're fucking. I mean, my my Breitling had that movement in it. They're noisy as shit, whereas, because it's manual wind, it doesn't have that fucking big rotor. And it's... I think they're cooler. I, I, I really do think they are a... They're a really cool watch. I like the fact it doesn't have a date, because... I'm very anal about having the correct date. I don't like the wrong fucking date on a piece. So, um... It's a really usable watch. They look amazing on a NATO. They really do. You could I, I love it on a James Bond NATO or a you know a darkish kind of NATO. And I love <clears throat> those caramel leather leather NATOs. They they look fucking superb. It's a watch that really pops on a NATO. I've got to tell you now, they just pop on a NATO. And um, I, I think they're just a cool watch. I mean. You are a watch... I mean, when people have a Rolex, they're not necessarily watch people. But when you own an Amiga Speedmaster, man on the fucking moon, you're a watch person because... Otherwise, you wouldn't put up with the manual wind. You wouldn't put up with the lack of the date. You wouldn't put up with the Helsolite. That would all piss you off. But they're a real enthusiast watch. And that's what I really love about... The Speedmaster Man on the Fucking Moon. It's an enthusiast watch. You're part of the club. You're a weiss when you got an Amiga Speedmaster Man on the Fucking Moon. You're not a proper weiss until you've owned an Amiga Speedmaster Man on the Fucking Moon. And they're, they're just so cool. They're a cool watch. They're, they're not a lot of money. They, they really aren't exorbitant. They're a lot of bang per buck. And... Uh, I, th I think Amiga 
Omega. I mean, they've released Coaxial. That, 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 they kind of... They're their own worst enemy. They release too many fucking limited editions, which makes the non-limited edition one the one to have. But uh, I, I love them. I, I, I think they are great watch. Really, really great watch. I'm Archie Luxury talking a love affair with watches. These are the watches I love. Tell me what you fuckers think of that. We specialize here in pre-owned Rolex watches. Rolex watch is a very special timepiece and we always do the servicing exactly as factory specifications. We buy a pre-owned piece and we put it into brand new condition. We have Rolex certified technicians working on that. We completely disassemble the piece, we adjust and polish and change every single part of the watch. You have to have certified watchmakers that know what they're doing. If you have an expensive car, you're just not going to bring it to any mechanic that doesn't know what they're doing. You spent $5,000. It's like if you put money in the safe deposit box. And one or two years from now, you will keep having your $5,000. We have to spend a lot of money to get all this equipment together, but makes me feel i doing what I'm supposed to do. It's not a question of money, it's my passion. Jewelers on time, simply the best.